the top ETF in this list produced a 136% return over the last five years, but it's not the one I'm buying or the one every investor should own. Of the 15 ETFs I'll show you today, only one will give you the perfect balance between income and growth. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and the fourth in what's becoming one of the most popular series on the channels are just one stock videos. If you could only invest in one stock in different themes, which would it be? We're going to cover all the strategies here from value to growth, tech stocks, and by the end of the series, you'll have a portfolio of the very best stocks in each. So look for the link to the full playlist in the description below and join the community. This is going to be the most challenging video yet in the series. With those other topics, we had a clear goal of finding the best value stock, the index fund that gave us the entire market, or, or the best blue chip stock for growth and returns. But, but exchange-traded funds are different. I know you want to get to the good stuff, those 15 ETFs and the very best for your portfolio, so I'm going to hold off on how these are different and how to invest. I'll first show you the best exchange-traded funds in different themes, so, so you're covered no matter what you need in your portfolio. First up is a battle of the growth ETFs, the ARK Innovation Fund, ticker ARKK, and the Vanguard Growth ETF, ticker VUG. Growth ETFs invest in companies with the sales and earnings growth to be the next Amazon or Apple, the companies changing the world in which we live and rewarding shareholders with massive returns. Now that means it's usually going to be mostly stocks in technology, biotech, and the internet here because those are the sectors where we see the fastest growth. Do not expect much in dividends though. These companies are reinvesting every penny into growth, not returning cash flow to investors. And the Vanguard ETF does pay a 0.6% dividend yield. Not much, but the best you're going to find among growth funds. The fund holds shares of 260 companies, the largest growth companies based in the US. And you can see here that focus with 48% of the fund in tech stocks alone, which which is going to include all your internet and social media stocks as well. Looking at these stocks, it's a who's who of tech growth with Apple, Microsoft, and Tesla. But Home Depot? Really? Anyway, even with a few wonky picks, uh, the Vanguard Growth Fund has returned 83% over the last five years, even after the crash this year, and, and charges a rock-bottom 0.04% expense ratio. That low expense ratio goes a long way in why I like the Vanguard Fund here over that more popular ARK Innovation ETF, the ticker ARKK, with its expense fee of 0.75% more than 18 times the VUG. Now, I'm not writing off Kathy Wood and her team over at ARK just yet, because when they're right, they're right big time. The fund jumped 164% in 2020 alone, and, and I do like a lot of the stocks it holds. Now, these companies are changing our world, and ARK puts a lot of research into the stocks it picks, stocks like Tesla, Teladoc Health, and Block. Now, by the way, if you ever want to know exactly what stocks are in an ETF, you can always go to its website and look for either portfolio or holdings here in the menu. It's going to show you the sectors as well as the individual stocks. It's also a great way to get ideas for stocks to buy if you want investments in a specific theme. Now notice I'm not talking about the index funds here like maybe the NASDAQ QQQ or the tech sector ETFs or, or the leveraged ETFs like the ProShares Ultra Pro QQQ here. We already covered those best index funds to buy in the series and for growth, I wanted to get to those funds that gave investments in the theme, not the tech stocks themselves. Again, while I do like some of the individual stocks in that ARK ETF, I gotta go with the Vanguard fund for that more stable long-term return here, producing an 83% return over the last five years and at a super cheap expense ratio for investors. We are just getting started here on our list of 15 great exchange traded funds, but I wanna explain what you're getting here with an ETF, why they're so important for investors, and why this video is different from the other ones in our Just One Stock series. Now, like we saw in our index fund video, an ETF is a fund put together by a portfolio manager to hold stocks in a group or a theme. So the manager has a topic that they think investors are interested in and they buy the best stocks in that theme, the best growth stocks, the best value stocks or cybersecurity stocks. Then they sell shares in that fund to investors. So here they're saying, you know, hey, I know you love value stocks, but you don't want that risk of buying just one or two. Why not buy a share of this fund and get all 100 stocks so, so you get the returns from the whole theme instead of just one or two stocks? How ETFs are different from index funds, though, is index funds invest very broadly across an index like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ or even the entire stock market. Index funds are what you buy when you want to be the market. The ETFs we're talking about in this video invest in a much narrower theme, so maybe just growth stocks or even as narrow as those in the cannabis industry. And what this does, this allows investors to really focus in on a trend for returns that, that you'll never get with an index fund. A great example here on an ETF I'll talk about later. Uh, say you're excited about that trend in electric vehicles. 
Now you could invest in the Futures Vehicles and Technology ETF, that's the ticker CARZ, which holds shares of the big automakers like Tesla, Toyota, GM, and Ford, but maybe you don't want just the car makers. Okay, you're more excited about that EV technology and, and the demand for batteries. So instead, you could buy the Lithium and Battery Tech ETF, which is much more narrowly focused. And that focus would have paid off with a 135% return on that Lithium ETF over the last five years, beating both the Future Vehicles ETF shown here in purple with a 32% return, and even the broader S&P 500 index in red with a 64% return. But now that's the challenge for a video series called Just One Stock. And I can't tell you which ETF to buy because I don't know what trend you wanna follow or what you need in your portfolio. And yes, I have been waiting this whole video to get in a Twilight Zone reference. But that's why I'm highlighting the 15 best ETFs to buy in these different themes, four topics and trends to show you the best options for, for whatever you need in your portfolio and let you make the choice. One of the most popular topics on the channel here and three dividend ETFs to compare, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Fund, ticker VIG, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield, VYM, and the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, ticker SCHD. Now, unlike growth stocks, the best dividend payers are in those older sectors like consumer staples and utilities. The companies in these funds are returning cash to shareholders instead of reinvesting it. And that means price return on your shares is going to be lower compared to those growth stocks, but you're going to get that constant dividend income to spend or reinvest. And I'll tell you, I used to love the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Fund, that ticker VIG. Like, I loved it, but I wasn't in love with it. The fund invests in the largest companies in the United States with a history of growing their payouts and has a surprisingly high weight in tech stocks and industrials as well, something you usually don't get in a dividend fund, so maybe a little bit more growth here as well. Looking at the top stocks in the fund, it's all the blue chip companies paying dividends like Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan, and Coca-Cola large companies with stable cash flows that will always be able to cover that dividend. But the problem with the VIG is that dividend yield of 1.9% is just not enough to get excited about. I mean, that's only slightly above the 1.6% yield on the overall market, so it's a little hard calling this one a dividend fund. <sighs> you broke my heart, VIG. So then I moved on to the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, the VYM, for that same low expense ratio, but a yield of over 3%. The VYM is a little more traditional, investing in stocks with those above average yields. So, so you get more of the sectors like financials, healthcare, and consumer staples. Now there is gonna be some overlap between these two funds, like both hold Coca-Cola because, well, yeah, you gotta have Coke, but there's enough of a difference to drive that higher dividend yield. But the problem here with the VYM is because it doesn't have those growthier stocks and technology, the return has been really disappointing. That high dividend ETF has only produced an 8.9% annual return over the last five years, well below the 11.9% on the Vanguard Appreciation Fund. So the first fund was too hot and the VYM was too cold, but the third dividend fund, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, ticker SCHD, was just right. The Schwab ETF holds shares in a hundred of the highest dividend payers within the large cap US market and includes a lot of those faster growing tech stocks as well. Tech makes up about 20% of the fund, giving it the return plus that higher 3.4% dividend yield. The fund is covering all its bases here with Coke and Pepsi, but also has some dividend stocks you might not see in these other funds like Cisco Systems and Broadcom. And finally, I found a home with dividend ETFs. You see the Vanguard Appreciation Fund here in green, almost identical price returns as the Schwab SCHD in purple, both well above the return on the other Vanguard dividend fund. And what you don't see in that graph though is the extra return you get from the dividend. Including the dividend, the Schwab fund has returned 13.1% a year versus the 11.9% for the Vanguard VIG over the past five years. Now making 13% a year on a dividend fund is pretty damn good, but I know a lot of you are out there are asking which ETFs have the highest returns. And for that, you need to look at the thematic funds, those investing in a very select topic beyond the broader ETFs like growth and dividends. These are funds that latch onto a trend in the markets like clean energy, lithium, and cybersecurity and just ride it higher. That means the ETF with the highest return is gonna depend on what trend is hot right now. Totally frustrating answer, but I've got six thematic ETFs you can watch in different trends. Here we've got the Global X Lithium and Battery Tech ETF, ticker LIT for that demand in batteries for electric vehicles, what is sure to be one of the biggest stories over the next decade. The iShares Global Clean Energy ETF, ticker ICL, 
in, a fund that has fallen hard this year, but is another strong trend for the future. One I really like here, the First Trust NASDAQ Cybersecurity, ticker CIBR, not as fast on growth, but a more stable run higher and definitely a solid trend. Here's a newer ETF, the Global X US Infrastructure Fund, ticker PAVE, a fund of construction and engineering companies that could benefit as the nation's infrastructure gets updated. And the Crane Shares CSI China Internet ETF, ticker KWEB, is a little more risky, but stocks in the fund are deep in value territory. And for all the 420 investors out there, the ETFMG Alternative Harvest ETF, ticker MJ, naturally is probably the most broken trend, but still with the potential. And you can look into the individual stocks on each fund's website, or let me know in the comments below if you want to see a full video on one of these kinds of trend ETFs. The lithium and clean energy ETFs have boomed higher, more than doubling over the past five years, even after a big sell-off this year. Those are some strong long-term trends, and the crash has wiped out a third of the price, so we're also becoming good value deals at this point. The cybersecurity and infrastructure funds are less likely to make you rich, but are still great trends and much more stable as well. And here, that cannabis ETF, I think this one eventually hits another surge in investor sentiment to take it higher. Now, honestly though, the thing about these theme ETFs is you don't need any of them, but they are great for capturing those emerging trends, especially if you don't want to pick the individual stocks in the group. Be careful on the expense ratios here though, because these types of funds are more expensive to hold in a portfolio. One group of ETFs left before I reveal my favorite exchange traded fund. And here I wanted to highlight the income ETFs, the alternative asset funds with super high dividends. These are some great funds if you want that income over price returns with dividends higher than you'll find anywhere else. For example, the Spider Multi-Asset Real Return ETF, ticker RLY, pays a 12.6% dividend yield and has been super stable this year, up 2.6% while the rest of the market crashed. Now this is a fund of funds, so it holds shares of other ETFs and is designed specifically to produce that return after inflation. So it's gonna own a lot of those commodity funds that have done so well this year. These are some good funds that investors just don't see that often, like the Vanek Agribusiness ETF, ticker MOO, which if nothing else, you can always have fun saying moo. A couple of REIT funds give it the real estate exposure, and it has infrastructure funds here as well. Another multi-asset fund I've followed here is the First Trust Diversified Income Fund, the MDIV, with its 7.5% dividend. Now, this fund doesn't focus quite as much on inflation as the RLY, but does hold a lot of different types of investments that help it smooth out any stock market crashes. It's only down 4.5% so far this year as the rest of the market sold off 20 and 30%. And of course, we couldn't talk income ETFs without mentioning the Global X NASDAQ Covered Call ETF, the QYLD, a favorite among investors for its 11.9% dividend yield paid out on a monthly basis. What the QYLD does, it holds 100 of the largest stocks in the NASDAQ index, so it has a lot of those big growth stocks like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. Against these, it sells monthly call options to generate that income and pay the higher dividend yield. Now the problem is with any of these income ETFs is if the return on the stocks they hold don't beat that dividend payout, then the price of the shares is gonna fall. It may not seem like a problem if you'd never intend on selling the shares, you just wanna keep collecting that dividend, but, but if you ever do sell, a lot of that dividend returned is wiped out by the losses on the stock. Here you see the annualized total returns for each fund, and each is well below the dividend yields. The real return ETF has done pretty well on that inflation-fighting investments this year, but, but most of the funds have lost a big chunk of their value. Now again, I know a lot of investors that know this and still invest in these funds because they just want that constant income, and that's totally fine. I just want you to have all the information so, so you can make your own decision. I'll reveal that favorite ETF to buy next. And remember, the exchange traded fund right for my portfolio may not be the same for yours, but this one is a perfect balance between income and growth, and it fits just about any portfolio. But first, if you're just starting out, I wanna give you an idea of the best ETFs to buy for beginners. What would make for a great start to your portfolio? Now first here, you're gonna to wanna to start out with some index funds to give you that market returns and spread out your risk. So, don't forget to check out the video on the best index funds to buy that I'll link to below. Next, whether you wanna invest in some of those ETF trends or not, every investor should have some growth and dividends in their portfolio, so I would add one of those growth ETFs as well as a dividend fund. And just those two funds are gonna give you consistent cash flows from the dividends, but also help grow your portfolio over time with some of those best growth stocks. And beyond that, it's up to you if you wanna invest in some of those trend or theme ETFs. I really like this type of investing because it's those big picture, long-term trends changing our world. 
being able to invest in an ETF that gets all the stocks in that trends just takes the stress out and the risk out of having to pick just one or two companies. We've talked about the core satellite strategy before here on the channel on my favorite way to invest it and a strategy that's going to save you hundreds of hours of research. With ETFs and index funds, these are going to make up that core part of your portfolio. You'll have 50 or 60% of your money in a handful of funds that that are going to give you those marker returns and the broad returns on these major trends. Then with the rest of your portfolio, that 40% left over, you can invest in 10 or maybe 15 individual stocks. You'll never have to worry about that ETF portion of your portfolio because it's diversified across hundreds or even thousands of stocks. And that's going to give you a simple, stress-free strategy that, that frees up time to research your individual stocks. And now, the best ETF, the one every investor needs in their portfolio, the Schwab Dividend Equity ETF, the SCHD. I love it. This fund just checks a lot of boxes, not just for dividend investors and that 3.4% yield, but it consistently produces a solid return and holds a lot of those blue chip stocks that we talked about in our last video in the series. It's just an overall great ETF to give you that income plus appreciation and the stability during a crash. Click on the video to the right for the best index fund to buy right now and the power of being the market rather than beating the market. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.